Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Penny Bloom Podcast. <laughs> Joe, what the fuck? <laughs> he is valid. He is the white wolf. The He's- cookout. Cookout verified. Cookout verified. That check mark next to his name, White Wolf. Roy is in the chocolate shop. Do you hear me? Oh, hi. I was so confused. I was yeah. like, Joe, why the fuck you ain't want to howl? <laughs> yeah, boy. They must I was, be in bro, I, I I was unaware of what was happening. They I told was, me they had I a was surprise for me. I was expecting so much worse whenever Joseph said, I don't, I don't know. I don't really want to do it. I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like borderline. Like I might have to cut it out of the show. But I, I think we're I, chill. I, I, I did honestly too. Think we're chill. <laughs> yeah, Joseph, you didn't say any n words. Don't worry. Yeah, if you uh, if you're interested in the unrated and uncut version of this podcast, head to Patreon dot com slash Coro Bloom, where you can pay five dollars a month to hear our all access content. Just gonna promote that there. I am wait, wait, Colton Robertson. Quick. I'm sorry, Colton. Real quick, no, just to be sure. Everything makes it through for the uncut, right? Eh, well, within reason. I will okay. not All like. Right. I will not ruin an image here. Okay. No, 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 no. I know that. I'm just saying, like previous conversations that have been had that have gotten cut would make it through. Yes. All right. Sweet. Colton, I have something. Wow. I'll, I'll I'll bring that back up later in the podcast. I'll bring it up. Yeah. So. I hate midgets. All right. right. Oh my god. <laughs> God. I'm <laughs> I don't hate you. Just... What? <laughs> All right. I don't. I don't know where that reference is right, from. But let's right. start. Let's start the show. Yeah. So, welcome in to the Penny Bloom Podcast. To Zai Colton Robertson, and this is the Falcon and the Winter Soldier weekly episode breakdown. This week is the finale. And what a finale it was. I'm joined by one Tillman McClooney the third. Hello. Tildo, you know how it'd be about back up in the cuts. Happy to be here once again. You know, sad is coming to an end, but I see future projects in the future. Oh, 100%. Uh, including Attack on Titan since Colton has started watching such things. <laughs> yes, it's, I have. And guys, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm sad day, but also a happy day for us. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the future with you, Tillman, but let's. Let's let's really pick this one apart, you know? Let's really get into it. I'm also joined by Joseph George. Hello, friend. Hello. How, how's how's it going, man? I am phenomenal. How are you, Joe? You know, I am. You I are. Just, I am. I, you think, I am. therefore, you are. Yeah. <laughs> I just God, truly I am that. right I now. I love that about you, Joe. You just you just think therefore you are. And I'm also joined by Miles my fucking buttress. Man, I'm just I'm just so happy that Excuse Y'all gonna pick that up? <laughs> I, you know, I'm you just I'm just so, pick that up. <laughs> I'm just so happy that especially now that Tillman's muted, I can I can say this and he can't even say anything in response to me. I I got a little I got a feeling of what Joseph felt like whenever he had all whenever he had those big brain moments. Absolutely. Because I just I was so right during this episode and I sat there the entire episode with a smirk on my face looking mm-hmm. at Tillman with a look of just I'm <laughs> right and you're a bitch. <laughs> it is it is a good feeling to have, you know, whenever you do go through that, but just imagine having that all the time, every second of your being. That's the difference. Well, that's why I said I just I got a small taste. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That's but just I, your. I want that's the just audience your, to fully. You I live that. Yeah, I, I live that. That's I yeah. want the audience to 
you know, have that knowledge be known. As as throwback to what you just said, just I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah, you so are. You are. This episode yeah. brought me closer to just who I am. It it did. It makes um, you think. It it done diddly did. It it did its job. Marvel slam dunked on many different categories. Um, in this oh. episode, absolute slam dunkers. Just random um, shit. Got got everything you want from this episode. Like I got everything I wanted and more. I yeah. I would say I almost did. I would have liked if Carly made it out. I understand why That's, she didn't. As I soon as I saw her didn't. die, I I immediately turned to Tillman and I said, "This is going to be the only part of the episode that Colton's not going to like." Yeah, is the fact and, that she didn't make it's it like, out. I get why she died. I expected her to die. It's not it's not like yeah. I. It's not like I wasn't ready for it, and I'm glad they did it the way they did it. They did it the only way I would have been okay with it, which is, you know, she's the she's one of the only people who knows Sharon's the power broker. Yeah. Sharon kills her to kind of shut her up a little bit. Yeah, Therefore, she died with not, a, with, with real killing reason. her. It's not Bucky killing her. Yeah. It's not John Walker killing her. Thank fucking God that wasn't the case. Yeah, I'm so that glad good. that he didn't get the chance to do that. And I, the only other person I may have been okay with is Zemo. Zemo. Mm. Yeah. I guess, I don't know. This finale just ended in every, I, I never, I didn't have a bad thing. You know, I don't have a bad thing to say. I think every, on every basis of every storyline, everything was just like, ah, oh, like, yeah, just they were, such scripted. I don't know. It's, it's like, yeah. I don't know. It, it was a good episode. Yeah. He said that everything every, – you know, everything drew to a close, and that's something that I really liked from this episode was all the all the storylines came to a close. We really got to like an, uh, an ending point, and we didn't have the like the loose ends that – like because WandaVision, at the end of WandaVision, there were those loose ends as, in, in like where did uh, – White Vision go. Where did White Vision go? What's, what the fuck is Wanda doing? Um, where did Billy and Tommy go? All, like yeah, we had these, they, these, yeah. these, like these, uh, you know, open ended, like in, we had an ending, but we still had an open ended. So it can go in a bunch of different directions as to where they're going. Whereas for this, it was much more of a, this is a hard ending. You're getting answers to your questions and we're not going to then give you more questions outside of a couple more small ones. Like for future uh, projects. Yeah, for future projects, but that were like very small ones that are very distant projects, not like big not ones that are like, future. yeah, that are, hey, wh- what's happening in the next movie? Well. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the setup we get there, you know, and mm-hmm. the one that we do get is Captain America 4. That's kind of the setup, I feel mm-hmm. like, where we'll get, I'm assuming, the power broker as the prominent villain or a prominent villain. And then I expect that, you know, we'll also see Sam and Bucky together. You know, Sam is Captain America and Bucky is the Winter Soldier still. And uh, do you think Bucky should keep that moniker, the Winter Soldier? I I would be 100% down going back to us howling if he changed his name to, like, the White Wolf. That'd be dope. Yeah. That would be pretty awesome. I petitioned for the White Wolf. I'm sure not calling him Battlestar. I'm sure as hell not calling him Battlestar. But – Yo, I would be down for him to keep the Winter Soldier, you know, and kind of change the name for like a force for good instead. Yeah, I think that'd be a cool route of of sort of redemption for that. Kind of like, kind of, yeah, kind of like redeem the name itself. Yeah, exactly. Instead of uh, people knowing Bucky Barnes as something new, they yeah. can just admire what he's become. You know. Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd be down for that. I think that'd be really cool. And I like the ending we get here with him. Him being with Sam down in Louisiana, just hanging out. Just I love that ending. In the cookout, invited, valid. Valid. Is verified. 100%. It's the standardized test. He valid. I mean, that's the valid standardized test. It's like the equivalent of the ACT, basically. So... Basically, honest, honestly. Basically. I mean, I love uh, I love a lot of things about this episode, though. And in particular, I love the introduction at the beginning. Seeing Sam Wilson as Captain America is actually 
One of the coolest on-screen portrayals of any superhero ever in action. Yeah. Not going to fucking lie. This was so much cooler than I anticipated it being. And I am, like, super fucking on board. And obviously, I knew I was going to be. Like, he was going to be cool. But, like, dude. He's basically he, Iron he, Man he, and Captain America. Exactly. He's not just yeah. – he's not. He's, he's got so much more to him now. He's a more exciting character to watch than Steve Rogers' Captain America was, yeah. frankly, in action sequences. And obviously, love well, Steve that, Rogers. Never, yeah. never going to abandon the OG or anything. But, God, Sam Wilson as Cab is fucking awesome. Steve Steve is always going to be – he's going to be a little bit cooler in the, like, in the just straight hand-to-hand because he's, you know, a super soldier. And uh, sure. Sam's sure. never going to have that. But Sam's always going to be able to do a little bit more – fancy shit in that hand-to-hand combat because he's going to be able to you know use a little booster pack to you know like push someone and shit like that also loved how about loved the suit looked looked so looked so good the only part that i didn't like about it was i didn't like the little shoulder pieces oh yeah they didn't look like they fit correctly they look like they were either supposed to be a little bit tighter and be a little bit more flush or they just needed to not be there because i didn't like the way that they just kind of like jutted out and yeah. it almost looked like he was yeah. wearing like the, the it almost Wakanda, looked like he had like a the Wakandan, like uh, shoulder pad like suit where it like forces the shoulder. It almost looked like that on his suit, and I was like, I don't like that. That's not that's not a look. I think they just got Anthony Mackie's like suit measurements wrong. And they're like, oh, screw it. Like yeah. I'm sure a Marvel yeah, project like, was like, you know what? Forget it. <laughs> we fucked that up. But you know, it go, go still ahead. looked still like that, that. In in saying that, looked great. That was Looks, the only complaint oh, that yeah. I had I didn't, about it. I didn't have it looked a fantastic, except for that tiny little thing. I was like, that just <laughs> looks. Everything else looks so clean. That one part just looks off. No, oh, but still, the cool for me, the coolest superhero suit we have. Ooh. for my and for my money. You mean like in the MCU or ever in the MCU at the moment? Ooh, I don't. Know, I think Tony's I guess in the, suit is well is in the cooler. MCU at the moment. I would I agree because we don't have. Because we don't have a Black Panther right now, we don't have a. Okay, we don't I have know. a. I mean, all time I mean, you. I'm talking oh, like all time MCU. MCU. I still think I still Tony's, think Black Panther and Tony's. Yeah. I, obviously, I think Black Panther gives him a run for his money, but I. I'm I think Tony with the new Scarlet Witch costume. I'm well, Scarlet. That, I mean, that that's costume. just. Uh, I'm always fucking with. The I'm new always Scarlet fucking Witch with. The, yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking you. with the Scarlet Witch costume for a different reason. Regardless. From fucking with that. <laughs> That's regardless. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with Joseph. I think I think the Iron Man suit pushes it pushes yeah. it out just a little bit for me because that's just too it's too iconic now for like the the Marvel. I mean, come like, on! It became an Infinity Gauntlet at one point. Like that's pretty dope. That's that's multifunctionality. That's awesome. it, it had the ability to just be like, I know how to do that. Like, Boop. Yep. <laughs> well, and obviously, I was watching Endgame yesterday because it was the you know two year anniversary of it and stuff. And I was like, Fuck, you know what I got to really? relive? Yeah. I, I was like, I, I want to relive this oh, a little bit. God. And I watched that moment where Tony accidentally figures out time travel and he, he's that's it. Oh yeah. Mobius and I'm, strip, I'm just, yeah. Like the Mobius And I was just like, thing. that is the perfect Tony. It's start the thing most Tony me. thing ever. And then mm-hmm. the conversation afterwards where he's like trying to like, he's like, Oh, what are, what are you learning about? Huh? What was it like gardening or some shit? It was a uh, composting. Composting. Well, that's interesting. I just figured out time travel. <laughs> and, he's like, and she's she like, it out. and she's like, just so we're on the same page. And he's like, <laughs> time travel. And she's like, oh shit, you yeah. figured out time travel. Like, can you yeah. imagine if someone came to you and was like, uh, I figured it out, <laughs> and was and was time smart travel. enough to where whenever now. to where whenever they said, yeah, I figured out time travel, you were like. Are you f- for for real though? So because like Tony, if, if anyone came to me right now, I'd be like, shut the fuck up. No, you is just, Tony no, okay? Right. Because I thought before this, before Tony figures out time travel, I thought that Shuri would be the smartest human on Earth. But like, if you know time travel, like no, it's a hundred percent. It was a hundred percent. I I would say Tony would give most people a run for his money because like there's that scene in like uh, mm. I think in the first Shuri, Avengers movie, just the just because of the fact that Shuri's the smartest in Wakanda makes her the smartest in the world. I agree. No, I I like, think I think Shuri knows more about certain smart. things. But like, there's that scene in the first Avengers movie where um he's talking about some like 
some super advanced like whenever they're or yeah whenever they're looking for the tesseract and there he's like it's some super advanced like nuclear physics or something like that oh, yeah and he said he and, read that book in 30 and minutes agent so. hill is like since when have you been an expert on on you know quantum nuclear physics and he was like oh i read a, i read a book about it last night <laughs> like he read a book about it last night and got that and knew enough about it to be able to use it to find the tesseract that's why i would say i would give him the edge over search Shuri, because I feel like if if they let him into, I guess Shuri into Wakanda, is more just specialized. If, yeah, if they no. let him into Wakanda for for a know, day, man. he'd be he'd be Shuri's he'd know like everything 17. there is to know about Vibranium. But, okay, but Shuri is like after, seventeen. True, but after Tony discovers time travel, like that's it. Like he's the smartest guy at that time. Yeah, like but uh, and I also mean, the conversation was like, I mean, yeah, like, I, I mean, can if throw you away. Out time travel. You're, you're probably. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're probably yeah, set. You're, yeah. Mobius strips are cool. If you ever want to look up number file videos on Mobius strips, it's actually pretty cool. There are like uh there's this uh Dan Slot comic book called The Silver the, the Silver it's a Silver Surfer arc. And uh there's one one of the issues is in the shape of a Mobius strip. That is dope. It's it's so difficult to read. One of the issues like yeah. one of the comics is in the yeah. shape of a movie. Well, there's what? like a story. There's a story and a Mobius strip that you have to find. It's not like that you can read dope. the comic and understand one story, but there's like another story within it through a Mobius. That's fucking. Strip. That's fucking weird. That's dope. That's cool. Super fucking cool. Uh, but nevertheless, let's get back to the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, we were talking about uh, you True. know, Cap's Cap's new suit and. Watching him bust through that window at the very beginning, wings, he like, he flaps the wings out, throws the shield through that fucking window. I was like, oh, fuck, we're in mm. for it. This is going to mm. be the shit. This is going to be so fucking And they cool. let us know right off the bat, I am Captain America. Yeah. Boom. Like, yeah, like he, boom. they were like, who are you? And he was like, I'm Captain America. And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, he's not... Damn He's right you are. From that. He yeah, is damn right you Captain are. America. Yeah. Yeah. And I like I like that moment later in the episode too, where someone's like, "That's that Black Falcon there." Mm-hmm. I tell you. And the other guy's like, "No, that's Captain America." I was like, I was uh, like a tear a tear went down my face during that moment. I won't lie. I was like, I was like, this is moving as hell. Like, I okay, okay. it was kind of corny. It was kind of cheesy. Oh, absolutely. Like, it was cheesy, it so good, but it got me. Yeah, it did get me. I definitely turned to Tillman whenever that scene happened, and he goes, "That's Black Falcon." No, that's Captain America. I turned to Tillman, and I nudged him. I said, "No, that's Black Captain America." <laughs> <laughs> well, what was funny is like, I remember that moment at the end where they were like, "So, what's your name now? Uh, are you are you? When did the government make you the Captain America? Are you what is it now, <laughs> Captain Falcon?" Like they were they were still hesitant to give him the America. Yeah. Name. <laughs> Yeah. Like he was like, "Are you Captain Falcon now?" Jeez. <laughs> yeah, dude. The slam dunks Anthony Mackie laid down during that freaking uh... dude. I loved this Boom. when he when he looks at them and he goes, "People, ordinary people joined her cause to fight the most powerful governments in the world." Did any of you think why would they do that? Like, and that's like. How difficult is it? How difficult is it to understand? That's that's a fair point. I mean, it that was a, a slam dunker. The, the look on their faces were like, damn, this dude's like right. And he's like and Captain I love America. When he was like I when call it, called out the senator. You got to do that part. Senator. Yeah, he was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. and the part where he's like, you know that sense of, you know, you know, helplessness and lack of power that you felt for that couple minutes. That's what some of these people feel all the time. This was like, oh, but, but he's like, yeah, shut the fuck up, Senator. Get to yeah, work, shut the fuck up, Senator, and do the work. And I love that. That's that's like he knows they can do better. And I like that. That's the difference between Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson. Is Steve Rogers saw an idealistic version of America? You know, he he, it was what he believed it to be. Yeah, but. Sam sees it for what it could be, you know, not for what it is. And I like, I like that about him. It's like fair. That. Do you, th- I, I got, I got another question here. I saw speculation. Okay. If given the opportunity sometime in the future, 
could Sam Wilson eventually wield Mjolnir if he's near? Uh, n- near near future? No, no, I don't think it'll be near. I don't think. It'll I, be no, near. I mean even like I mean like I mean like where the character's currently at. I don't think so. Got you. Because I think it takes like a like sacrifice. Not a sacrifice, but I think it takes like a true like like a mental like a a, a massive mental shift in like knowing exactly who you are and being like and and like knowing exactly what your goals are and i don't think his character is there yet in okay i think it I could think, happen eventually I think, but i also don't think they'll do that because I, I don't think steve I don't rogers, rogers, just because they've steve already rogers done steve rogers pre soldier or pre super serum could have lifted millionaire pre serum could have lifted millionaire i think it's strictly off ambition and knowing like having your mind set and Steve Rogers has had his mindset. The Captain America title does not make you worthy of Mjolnir. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not well, saying and that. No, okay. Also, okay, Steve, yeah. Steve Rogers, I, I, I'm pretty sure could, like, no, even Captain America Steve Rogers, because I did, I saw something, like, not too long after Endgame talking, like, whenever he finally wields it, where they talked about the scene in um, Ultron. Age, of Ultron. Age of Ultron, where he kind of shifts it, where they said, it was always our plan that he could lift it even then. Yeah. yeah. But, but he, he, did he didn't, didn't want because it, it wasn't – yeah, he didn't want to show like, oh, I can lift it because mm-hmm. that's also what makes you worthy of lifting Mjolnir is that you don't want to lift Mjolnir. Mm-hmm. You yeah. don't you, – you, like you don't you, your goal isn't, isn't to wield Mjolnir and take its power. It's just, oh, cool, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the way he slightly lifts it and Thor's eyebrow just goes, hmm. yeah. Yeah. That, that's – and Last I think, and I think most characters the aren't elevator gonna get, theory. aren't going to get to that state. <laughs> if you put Mjolnir in an elevator, does it go up? And yeah. if it well, does, is worthy. it worthy? Yeah, the building is worthy. Or is the um, only el- is the elevator worthy, or is the counterweight worthy, or is the company who made the elevator worthy? All of the above. The CEO <laughs> of the company that built it, <laughs> yeah. actually, whoever whoever installed the counterweight is worthy. It only goes up if that person's worthy. <laughs> wow, interesting. Um, but I think I think for just because we were talking about me earlier, I think characters like in, in, for in order for a character to lift it, it takes a like a state of mind that most characters probably only reach like near their deathbed. I get you, and that's why like I think I think I think like Iron Man or Tony Stark. I think Tony Stark up until about the point where he finally realized I have to give my life probably couldn't have lifted it. But once he realizes I have to give my life, and you know what, I'm okay with that. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for the good of the world. And I, he's no longer, you know, he's no longer after selfish intentions. No longer has selfish goals. He, his goals are, are, are pure. I think at that point he probably could have lifted it as well. True. Okay. Okay. That's fair. It is. Inter- it is an interesting concept, though, of how you get deemed worthy. Is it like? Is it a summation of all your acts, or is it? A, or can it be a shift? Mm. I think it's I think it's probably a shift because of the like whole Thor second or the first Thor movie. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, it can just decide. Yeah, and ultimately, it is up to Mjolnir. Oh, well, ultimately, ultimately, it's up to Disney. But <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. Or Odin. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> but I was just curious. I like I liked that line of questioning, but uh. We also got a uh, a a very very moving moment with Isaiah Bradley and Sam Wilson and uh, oh fuck mm. like I cried bro mm. Just... I was watching this at two a.m. and Emily was like what's wrong because I was like <laughs> <laughs> okay no, here's man, here's the up. scale here's the scale on how bad it was. Oh yeah, she was because, asleep she wasn't watching for because, the Because like <laughs> old people crying <laughs> like in general to the thing happening. But just old people yeah. crying in general it's is always already sad. so sad. Like if I just see a random old person crying, I'm probably going to cry. Just it just because I've seen an old person cry. <laughs> that is pretty but, sad. But up. then On you add in all. you add in all of Isaiah's backstory. The, the shit show of his life, basically. And then, boom! And then, like, oh my... Just, ah, uh, Oh my god. I don't know. 
Disney, they they did it. They they nailed this one. They for nailed me. it. Yeah, they nailed this show. They nailed this show. Yeah, this was this was too fucking good. And ultimately, I do think it uh, it says enough stuff against the status quo. You know that. I don't think it is very propagandic of America, you know, like and there's there's always that talk of how Marvel has swayed propaganda in in America through like Iron Man being a weapons developer and Captain America in general. But I think this did take an appropriate stab uh, at like I, should... I think Marvel's always kind of been anti propaganda because that's what the Iron Man movies were. It was like showing the corruptness of, you know, like weapons manufacturing and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, sure, and there's there's like always they, that. There's always that, but they always fall back on a military agency. That's true. They always that, fall back yeah, on a military agency. True. Captain Marvel Captain Marvel's an Air, Air Force pilot like and that's another that's another thing is that like uh and I'm not saying that this is a bad thing necessarily. I mean, propaganda in general not great, but like I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's just every hero that we get, pro- like most heroes we get, probably have some sort of American flag tie, whether it be military or government agency sort of thing, mm-hmm. you know? And that's most – or weapons developing is ultimately how – and obviously his shift in the first movie. But nevertheless, doesn't make Sam Wilson any less of a hero here, you know? Mm. Like he is – he looks to what – shit could be and and i said that earlier and i love i love that speech just like, love that speech oh, i mean it was just beautiful i mean it was it, it's not just talking to the mcu like he's talking to the world right there oh, absolutely. like disney knew that this is like this is a worldwide problem and like they i don't know like if there was a person who wrote this and then anthony mackie was like wow that's just so beautiful i like let me just say this or something like that. I don't know how that went down, but like I gotta, whoever I got to guess it was written because whoever was wrote that, like, Oh my God, like straight up, give them a Nobel peace prize. <laughs> something. I don't know. They were just the facts, you know, it was, it was so perfectly executed too. Like he, I loved the moment in the speech where he moves Bucky enough to like, be like, yeah, this is like, He's the guy, you know, like this is what he was meant to do. And I got when I when I like see him at at the at the party at the end and he's taking the pictures with all the people and stuff. I thought to myself, he was standing there at some point 30 years earlier. Never would he have thought that he would one day be Captain fucking America, you know, and neither would Steve Rogers. Neither would Steve Rogers. The scrawny ass little boy. You know, just this, just this kid from New Orleans, Queens, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Yeah, New, from New Orleans to Brooklyn. This isn't. <laughs> it's isn't it Brooklyn? Good. It's Brook. It's Brook. It's Brooklyn. Steve Rogers is from Brooklyn. Peter Parker's from. Queens. Is it Peter Parker's Queens? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's Peter okay. Parker's I couldn't Queens. remember. I knew one was. I knew what, like each was mm-hmm. there's yeah, one in Civil War. He's like, where are you from? And he's like, Queens. He's like, yeah, that's right. Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I liked that shit. That was a good, that was a nice little, nice little egg in that, in that movie. But uh, Hey, another, uh, Steve Rogers on the moon reference. This yes. episode on the um, moon. I mean, I don't think he's on the moon guys. I just don't. I mean, okay, not on the moon, I don't, but I don't like not necessarily the moon, but like maybe on the Scrolls ship, you know, with Nick Fury. I could definitely see him being there, but I would agree. I don't. I don't think he's on the moon. I mean, it's kind of. I funny don't know. Though. At this point, oh, at this point, I can see he's a man who is caught up with the times by now. He's Obviously, lived his whole yeah. life. It wouldn't. It would make sense for him to just live somewhere. You know, let me just die on the moon. I don't, I don't, he, I don't, I don't know that he would just be living somewhere though. Would he witness protection? Maybe. I don't know. His, his wife was Peggy fucking Carter. Yeah. But I feel like that he has to be in a position where like po- once Peggy dies, 
I feel like at that point he Once then Peggy like he died, went he back was so heartbroken that he just well, shot himself to the moon. Well, well, okay. <laughs> I th- I thought you were gonna say something else whenever you said I shot too. himself. I was terrified. Oh <laughs> no! It's like here comes a Patreon. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, cutting that no, out. no. <laughs> um. But uh, I think I think it's one of those things where once Peggy's gone, I feel like there's no way he just says, "All right, I'm just gonna live out the rest of my days on my own." <laughs> I feel like he has to then like kind of pick up where he left off. Now, obviously, he's not gonna be fist fighting anyone, but he's gonna pick up where he left off and where probably where he left off with Peggy because there was probably a point where they both stopped like working in like working yeah. for Shield, and I feel like he probably then went back to Shield and is now working for them still. Oh yeah. Yeah, because there's you, you think about who he is as a character. There's no way he would just say, "All right, I'm just going to live out the rest of my, you know, the rest of my days I on really my own." Think he would. I really think he would. I think whenever he, whenever Anthony Mackie, whenever Sam Wilson asks him at the end of the, at the end of Endgame, when he's like, "You want to tell me about it, or you're going to tell me about it?" and he's like, "No, I don't think I will." Like, I just think he's done. I think he I, is chilling. I think he's done, but I also think well, one. Even if he is done, there's no way. Like I think, even if he is done, he would de- still go up and go like you know how uh, that scene with uh, Samuel L. Jackson where he's just chilling up on the scroll spaceship sure. on a beach. I feel like he would go do something like that, be chilling That's up fair. there at That's at fair. the very least. But I also feel like even if he's not um, like actively like fight, like you know, I, I feel like he's done actively like fighting. But I feel like there's no way that he would just. I feel like he didn't want to say like he just said like no because he's like you know what I went back lived my life I don't really need to tell anyone about it I'm happy with what happened yeah and and I feel like after that then now he's I feel like now there's no way that he would just kind of just be done I don't know he's like 106 he pretty old man he is an old well no you got to think about it because he so he was like what like. How old was he whenever he became Captain America? I got to guess late twenties. Really, I thought that was wasn't he also like too young? Oh, I didn't think so. <clears throat> no, no, he was too small. I mean, he's an old guy. He lived. He lived pretty long, you know. Like when he went back in time, like that's whatever, however many years it took him. To go from his, let's say, 30-year-old self, you know, to old man looking like Joe Biden. Like, that's a long time, you know? Says a lot that he was, like, old as fuck and he looks like Oh, yeah, he 100% would be, like, 110. Yeah, if Bucky's 109 or whatever. He is also a super soldier, so you never know. Yeah. But uh, let's let's move on from that a little bit. Let's move on from that a little bit. Let's, uh, Let's talk about Sharon Carter. As the power broker, we got that, we got that post credit scene there, mm. and uh, I'm liking this. I'm liking I this direction it. for her. I think her as a a villain that kind of lurks in the background of a lot of stuff is a very good position for her. Like that's extremely exciting for me. There are still I've seen theories that she is not the power broker still because. She never admitted to it at all. And she kind of was, she kind of refrained. Her body language seemed, whenever like someone asked like, oh, so you're the power broker. She, her body language was like, I don't know. It, it kind of did seem weird. Like there's someone above her and she works for the actual power broker. It would make sense. It would make sense to, she did not straight up say, I am the power broker, but, but she does tell Carly, you betrayed me. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, they could have had a past that, you know, like maybe, maybe, you know, the power broker is not, uh, Shannon, Sharon, Sharon. I always get it wrong. I don't know why. Maybe the power broker is not Sharon and Sharon and Carly were super soldiers below the power broker. Like, I, she seemed to talk to her like she knew she was the power broker. Like you just miss your the power broker doesn't yeah, have much true. power without her muscle. That's true. I and here's the thing. 
and if she's like, not the power yeah. broker, welcome twist. But it'll be weird considering they left this feeling like she was the power broker. Yeah, yeah, and and the fact you know that her, she gets her old role in Shield, and she and then she was like, "We're about to have a whole lot," you know, whole yeah, lot we're of, about to make a whole lot of fucking money. Yeah. And what was also interesting is in that face off with Carly, Carly says, "I don't want to conquer or rule an empire." Is that what Sharon is looking to fucking do? I mean, she's going to be pretty powerful. Sharon, if she's powerful Sharon and Mandalorian. doesn't strike me as the tyrant type, personally. You know, like, I don't she, think she's, but, she's trying to become queen queen shit of fuck mountain, you know? Queen <laughs> shit of fuck mountain. What is, what is her thing that she's going to take over? I mean, do you think it would be, like, governments or, like, the world or like I think it's just like she's she she has such a a position of power that she can sway yeah she can sway influence wherever she wants so it might not be she actually rules the world but she rules the world from an underground Damn. sort of point of view but, you know she she can sway influence wherever she pleases with the with the kind of power she's about to come into but then you also do need to think about like yes i would agree i would never have expected her character to turn into a you know like a power broker type character, but you know, being essentially forgotten by your government and forced to find your way through the world. No it, doubt. It changes you. No okay, doubt. But- so here's the thing is that whenever they were like back in, you know, earlier episodes, whenever they were going in Mandrapore and like the power broker sent uh, or put a bounty on you know, their heads, but she was there at the same time as the people she sent. She had to, to maintain her cover. Yeah, but, like, weird, champ. I don't know. That's just weird to me. Like, she killed them all. Like, she killed them they all. They weren't, like, her men, necessarily. They yeah. were just bounty hunters. So, like, Also, I don't, I guess, I don't know yeah. that the power broker necessarily put the hit on them. I thought it was. I thought, like... No, it was just a hit went out on them because of the fact that they I thought, killed but the power broker one was the person who who said, hey, kill this person. I mean, the order probably came down from the power broker, yeah. And she also might have been just trying, you know, just take two birds out with one stone, and then she figured out what they were trying to do. And it was like, oh, shit, we have a problem. Yeah, she Mm -hmm. figured out, oh, you guys are after the super soldiers, and, you know. So are we. Yeah. Mm. Like, she didn't want them to even find out about the super soldiers who were on the loose. But now mm-hmm. there's there's people in, in the yeah, U.S. Now they're on the loose. <laughs> yeah. But I'm excited for that direction because I would – I got to think she's going to be a big the big bad of Captain America 4, you know? Oh, like, yeah, probably. Like some sort of – and if she's not, they've got to introduce some sort of like big-time power because like the – I mean she's an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and has massive criminal influence like – She's going to be able to do a whole lot of shit. That's going to be a powerful What's woman. What's her uh, comic story? She story she is not usually the power broker. The I power broker is a character power that. Broker. Yeah, the the power broker is a character that hasn't had much history. It's just kind of been around in the background. Does uh, I mean? Does her story? Does she? go dark or you know become a villain at all i think i as far as i know i feel like this is a pretty stark no pun intended left turn like this is not at all what sharon Mm. carter is usually about Hmm. interesting as far as i know as far as my comic knowledge goes but we also got val Mm -hmm. and the potential for a dark avengers with you know the u.s agent john walker you think and that's like how that. Deadpool's brought in? Do I think that's how Deadpool's brought in the Dark Avengers? I mean, I yeah, can't imagine that'd be pretty that. fucking like, cool, but I can't imagine that. Like, what if the Dark Avengers is like the boys, you know? But like, God, of, that would be the, MCU. the fucking wildest Crazy. shit ever. That would be awesome. That would be so fucking wild. And dude, I, I would be interested in seeing John Walker again. Mm. His storyline in this episode was mad interesting and mad disappointing in one one way. There was one scene with John Walker that I was like, 
I don't like that very much. But I do appreciate that when it came down to it and he could have kept going after Carly or he could save the people, he brought himself together a little bit and realized what it was always about before this. Mm-hmm. And he, he tried to save the people. Ultimately, he, he didn't. And Sam Wilson came in to save the day. Shout out the actual Captain America. But Just... nevertheless, I like that that decision was made. However... I don't like that that decision warranted Bucky getting a little buddy, bu- not buddy buddy with him, but being very, very suddenly all right with working with him. That did kind of sit wrong with me too. It was the way kind they, of like, weird the way how they, they ran were out in front of back. them. Yeah, the way they were guess, like jogging around together, and then they ran out and like front of them and ar- had them arrested. And they like I guess had this it was just before. kind of like we have a common enemy right now, you know, and like, like we, we it's just. You know, whether we're all right or not, like, we, we have a common enemy, so we might as well be working together right now. I, I don't know. It did seem kind of friendly, though, you know. I want like, to know how many people at this at this very location that the Flag Smashers actually killed. Because at this location, technically, I mean, John Walker should have been arrested, too, I feel like, if we're getting down to it. Well... Like it's 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 just it struck me as weird that like all of a sudden he's cool with like like the government's just gonna be like all right let him go we know we know no, that we but, dishonorably discharged him and stuff but they no but they already decided like we're dishonorably discharging you but you're not going to prison they already well, decided yeah, that like, it's also interesting that when he is still actively doing that stuff vigilanteism yeah they, they didn't say anything. I feel like it was just one of those situations where they were like listen I know we told you to stop but in this one situation. It worked out well that you didn't stop, so we won't we won't say anything to you. But also, stop. <laughs> Can we talk okay. about how much a big of an idiot freaking John Walker is in thinking that that metal shield would do anything? Oh my god! Like, that come on, so talk about that. It shit, was so that shit immediately was dispatched, dude. It was dented immediately, then just thrown off of you know to thrown off the scaffolding or like the building or whatever. It was I, so that shit was hilarious. It was like nothing. Like it flew weird too. Like it didn't have the the majestic sound of vibranium. You know that it was cool. It was yeah. just shitty. Like it was just so shitty. And, and, I loved. Uh, I loved also that he didn't win the the last fight with Carly. Mm-hmm. Carly got his ass, and that was that was the last time they faced off. Yeah. And after that, he was like, "All right, fine. I'll save the people. <laughs> fine, I'll save the people." <laughs> Dude, those freaking... Uh, I give up, you beat me three fucking times. Those freaking spider mines, I don't know what you want to call them, the things... Yo, like they that took, shit is wild. They were taking hello punches from Bucky, like, in his yeah, vibranium Those locks were like, secure. Dude, like, yeah. where did they get that Where they get that stuff from? I gotta guess, Sharon, that, like, they stole more yeah. than just super soldier serum, you know? Like, they have to have access somehow. Oh, yeah, they 100% stole some other shit. Wait, but the French guy ended up ended up working for Sh- for Sharon. Shan- Sharon. Yeah, Sharon. Sharon. And what are you confused about there? Yeah, and that's where they got their weapons from. That is where they got the weapons. So like that. Sharon right gave there. Carly their weapons. So Sharon gave Sharon Carly is the light. playing chess right now, Joe. Yeah. I don't think you realize, but this she is trying to come from all sides. She she's she's palpatining this hoe. Yeah, I she's, know. She's orchestrating shit. She is palpatining. That's it. That's the best analogy. That's good. That that made me understand. She's, she's it better. palpatining this hoe. She's palpatining Earth right now. Bro, the fact that she w- she like pushed weapons to Carly. She worked with Sam and Bucky to fight the Flag Smashers, but also hired Batroc to kill Sam. And then through like, Sam, basically got her position back. Exactly. Like, she is she is coming from this thing on all sides. Like, yes, it's she like, is. she is playing fucking Anything chess. Anything that Nobody will positively fighting. net me, I will do. Basically. Yeah. And I do like that we do get the confirmation in this episode a little bit that... Carly had been Carly was going to stick to the anybody who gets in my way is mm-hmm. going to die cuz it looked an awful lot like she was about to about to pull that trigger on Sam when Sharon got her. Oh, definitely. And, 
and like obviously I'm okay with Sam living. So it's obviously like, Sam was not gonna die. Obviously. Yeah, like, exactly. I knew I knew she, not she was either not gonna pull the trigger or she was gonna get shot. Like that was the, the those were the options there in that moment. And I was really hoping for not pulling the trigger. Uh, but I do appreciate that she stuck with her revolutionary tendencies all the way to the very end. She was very about her cause. She didn't give up all the way up to the end. Uh, but shit kind of sucks. Kind of sucks. I, I really would have liked to see where that character going. But that shot when Sam carries her body outside it's like and an then he lands with his fucking wings spread and that light's just beaming down on him, bro. Divine. Divinity. That was the that was the shot for me. I was like, this is beautiful. He it is Captain good. America. And he is Captain America. So we're calling him are we gonna refer to him as Cap now or like yeah, he's Cap now. So like we're, when we say Cap, we're talking about Sam, Sam. Wilson. Cap, that's weird. I feel like let's let's, let's make if it you're easy. Let's to like Steve Rogers. You're talking about Steve. You're not talking there, about Cap anymore. Is there is there something like vastly different between Steve and, <laughs> oh and, and God, Sam that we no. can use to differentiate them? Whenever to no. uh, to like you know tell which Cap no. is which? <laughs> no, no. Maybe oh, not, Sam will Sam will be Captain not. America. Steve will be White Captain America. Oh, exactly. Okay. okay. <laughs> God, you set that up so I hard. I knew where you were going <laughs> immediately. I loved, I loved the panic on Joe in Joe's voice. He was like, "No, no." <laughs> I know no. where you're going with this, Miles. <laughs> from the, I know you did. That's why I said. That's why I like I I delved into it from so hard. the get go. I knew where you were going. Oh my God! You almost gave me a heart attack right there, man. That was, that was a close one. Good. That means it worked. <laughs> God. But uh, it was a good fucking finale, guys. It, it really was. was. Good Not good a lot really finale. happened in the end. Yeah, I mean, like it was just they—they they really. What happened is that you know Sam became Captain America. That's ultimately, and I mean, you know, we get the political conclusion of the borders are not being you know closed again. The mm-hmm. the flag smashers' cause ended up you know bearing fruit because yeah. they're not. They're not doing what they were going to do. And Carly's, you, you could call it sacrifice. I don't think it's so much a sacrifice, but Carly's sacrifice did that. You know, she, mm-hmm. like Sam, Sam was moved by her so much, by her motivation, by her, by her cause so much that he was like, yo, y'all cannot do this. <laughs> like y'all got to ask <laughs> why. And y'all got to think about it critically. Think about why you're wrong. Think about why you're wrong. The Think about slam. when you're in those rooms, who's making the decisions oh, with you? Is it more of you? I mean, it was NBA Jam. It, I mean, it was freaking prime time. Slam Duncan on freaking the media, too, on live television. Anthony Mackie coming out here spitting freaking God, I loved slam everyone dunks. watching it on TV. Man. Sheesh. I mean, it was a sheesh. a true sheesh moment. It was the perfect cap to this series, too. No pun intended. Like it was just, Damn. it was like a, it, it was everything the show was about in one speech. It was telling you exactly what you should think about. And I don't, I don't know where Tillman's at, but I remember every time he would call Carly a terrorist, <laughs> I'd be like, "Not necessarily. I don't think so." And Sam. <laughs> Sam outright, oh, Tillman's, Tillman's not in his head, like, oh, yeah, she's a terrorist. But Sam outright says, we often use these terms, terrorist, thug. Uh, there was something else. I can't remember what the other one was. But he was like, we, we often use these to get around the question, why? Because if you use the word terrorist, people are going to be against them. Uh, they're automatically going to be like, well, that's not someone I want to be with. Yeah. But you got you to gotta listen to what they're saying, not just what they're doing. Uh. That's ultimately with Sam. Slam. How do you junk, feel? Man. How do you feel now that uh now now that Bertrock or whatever the na- what is whatever his name is, is Bertrock? Yeah. Uh, is he dead? Like, are we like for sure he's he's done? Didn't, like Sharon got his. Didn't ass. she just like just, just like shoot him in the in the face? Yeah, yeah, that dude's dead. I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of uh like leaving it up in the air. I'm pretty sure he she just point yeah, blank just yeah. shot him. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's he's done so. Yeah. Man, thinking about that, I wonder what kind of like rush Sharon felt in the moment killing him. Wow, is this a Patreon conversation <laughs> we're about to get into that's uncuttable? Oh god, and can't I realized I, I was thinking about, I was like, damn, I forgot to say something. Um, yeah, Joseph. So, like, what kind of rush do you think she had? <laughs> Would mean, you say come, she had an adrenaline rush, perchance? I mean, come on, you gotta admit, boys, you gotta admit that at least. The oh, adrenaline- you gotta. Oh, you got. Oh, I don't you know, betcha. Yeah, I don't know oh, why I went. I don't know but why I went Canadian. All speaking of speaking of death, Zemo got his. Zemo got his last word. Yes, he killed. He killed the super. Soldier. I was. I was so confused as to who that old fucking man was at first because I wasn't thinking of Zemo. I wasn't thinking about anyone else. I just, the, you know, the the thing blows up. The super soldiers die, and it cuts just an old man. Chilling in his fucking, chilling in the fucking van, and I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" Hmm. And then I was like, I was trying to think. I was like, "What old man would kill them?" And then oh, it yeah, cut to Zemo. I was like, Zemo. "It's his fucking oh, butler. Yeah. His oh, fucking yeah. butler killed him." I was so confused. I was like, "What? Who?" But I think the butler. No, I was like, "Is this? Is there the some butler, deep reference I'm missing?" <laughs> but the butler used Val to actually make the kill. Because Val got a call, it was like, hey, your boy Zemo, you know, got his hit or whatever. And, like, she got, Val got the call that it, the hit was successful. So, like. She he, might not have, she might not have necessarily. I think she Zemo. She might not have, like, been in think, on it, but it might have been, like, she got a call saying, like, hey, the the convoy with all the, with the super soldiers that were no, headed for the raft no, are all no, dead. No, no. And she was like, all right, Zemo no, killed him. No, no, Zemo killed his, or called his butler and said, hey, I need these super soldiers dead. Do it however you want. I need these super soldiers dead. And then the butler called and Val. And the butler was like, I'm on it, boss. I know exactly how to get this done. And then the butler called Val and was like, hey, you're more equipped for this. Boop, 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 boop. What's up, Val? I know you only call other people, but what's up? I mean, do you think do you think Sharon might have been involved in this process? Possibly. Do you think I... do you think that Sharon possibly joins this, you know, anti Avengers team? Which... Based on the way where we left off her character and what she said like on the phone call, I don't think Who she's she gonna talk be to a, on the a... phone. Who is she talking to? I don't know. Uh, probably her assistant. But the way that she was talking of we have an in now, and now we're going to have a bunch of, you know, government secrets, tech secrets, all this shit. I don't think she's going to be someone that's going to be getting behind a a dark Avengers that are, like, reformed supervillains that are now doing good. True. True. Yeah, because that's the whole point of the dark Avengers is they're doing good. I don't necessarily see, as, see her as a character that's going to be doing a whole lot of good. Fair. And I don't know, guys. I don't see Val as a character who's going to do a whole lot of good either. I don't think she's going to do a whole lot of good, but I think she's going to do a whole lot of selfish good. You think she's, like, they're going to be the Suicide Squad? Yes. Where they're going to be like doing good, but only, only to only for selfish reasons. Okay. I also okay, love I in that in them showing showing Zemo. I even I even called it in the last episode. I said we're getting a shot of Zemo on the raft after mm-hmm. doing something. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get a shot of him on the raft, happy as can be. <laughs> yep, reading that same book, freaking uh, goddamn Machiavelli. Machiavelli, yeah, freaking. I guess it's a good book. Machiavelli yeah. and his Illuminati all through your body, blows like a twelve gauge shotty. <laughs> run with me, hail Mary, run quick, see. Y'all know that, Tupac. Wow, that was beautiful. Um, that was beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. No problem. I don't have anything else to say about this episode, guys. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, not not much happened at yeah. all. Were there any post credit scenes? Yes, it was Sharon taking that call. That's right. right. Okay. And getting her position back in Shield. So yeah, okay. Wow. Yeah. Like a WTF. What's next? Like what the what what the F, you know? Well, we're gonna get Loki on June eleventh, but Sooner for us is the Bad Batch. Let's go May the 4th, baby! May the 4th, and obviously Tillman will not be joining us for the Bad Batch weekly. We will be back with Kyla Barnett, who was with us through the Mandalorian and WandaVision, but 
his presence has been deeply, deeply appreciated. And we will no doubt be back with Tillman McClooney at some point. I do not know if he is still listening. Thank you, Tillman, for joining us. I also want to thank Joe, Joseph George, for being here. Wow. Thank you very much, oh. Colton, for allowing me to be here. Absolutely, man. Anytime. And Miles Buttress, thank you. You know, th- thanks for having me, man. You know, I it, sadly, whenever I say any time right now, we won't be able to say next week even. But we could, we could soon, 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 soon even, soon even, <laughs> within the next two weeks even. Yeah. But again, this has been the Penny Bloom Podcast. I was Colton Robertson. Follow us on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast on Twitter at Penny Bloom Pod. Uh, fuck with the Patreon where the uncut, unrated version of this will be going up. Uh, Patreon.com slash Coro Bloom, C O R O B L O O M. And uh, fuck, man. Falcon and Winter Soldier. That was that shit right there, but that was the finale. Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Boy, oh boy, did I, did I fucking tear up when that popped up on the screen? I was like, oh, you, you that cheered was up for that? I did. I fucking hated it whenever that came up on the screen. No, I, under, I completely understood why it came up on the screen, but I saw it and I was like, "God, that was so fucking cheesy." It was, of, it was a little corny, they, but I love yeah. I love corny. I love it was no, I, like I right love there. it, but it was it was one of those like scenes where you're like, "All right, they just did that because they wanted to throw the title card in at the end." <laughs> I mean, come on, though, it and it's the whole like it's the whole like whenever um the like the TV show or the movie like says its title and it's the whole like. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> you know. I love that though. It's my favorite. Uh but nevertheless peace love and bloom and always praise Keanu Reeves. <laughs>